All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video. And I first want to go back to the constraints drop list here and turn off cavity painting. Just remember, whenever you're using cavity painting, to make sure to go back because oftentimes you'll be using other tools and wondering why it's not functioning properly. And that's because cavity mode is still active. With that in mind, let's go ahead now and click on our mesh. All right, so, and then let's choose fill with smooth, and turn off gradient mode, and let's click on the UV island here. And as I mentioned, you can always reduce your depth level here on your normal map. And you can also use your magnify reduction brush to work in an even more localized fashion. So for example, let's say we want to reduce the depth in the nose region, but leave it a little more extruded here in the brow region. I can scrub the degree of change slider in the toolbar in order to increase or decrease the effect as I brush. Let's bring it up to 100. And I can work in symmetry if I want, but in this case it's not necessary. So yeah, you have a lot of nice ways to really blend these individual shapes together. Bring that down a bit. Okay, so let's go back to the fill tool here. Let's look at some other options. You have fractal. Let's turn our color back on. Not turn our depth off. And so once more, you can see how the menu changes contextually based on the options that you choose. In addition to 3D Coat's own procedural patterns, we can utilize image maps to drive our noise patterns. So you can choose a custom slot or add custom and then select your color texture and or bump texture and then the mapping type let's go ahead and turn our depth channel back on and let's say I really like that particular pattern but I want a little bit more localized control well, one of the things that makes this tool set so powerful is that you can utilize its modulation capabilities with other tools in the workspace. So let's use the paint tool now, and it's going to memorize all the modulation settings that we have here. So let me turn color off, and I just want to paint with depth. So I'll adjust my depth setting here whenever I'm working with a brush. When I'm working with a fill tool, if I want to modulate depth, I want to adjust it in the tool options panel not here in the toolbar. Let's maybe choose another layer. That way we can just blend all of these depth layers together. And so all of this is working through the fill tool. And if I want to block off an area like the outer rim of the mouth, I can use the freeze tool to paint select or maybe use uh, splines to be a little bit more accurate and freeze these areas so that it doesn't get affected. Or I could use layer mask in order to hide parts of the layer. So yeah, this is really nice. And I, again, I can use that magnification and reduction brush to really blend it nicely together or I can reduce the depth amount here per layer. You may have already noticed that whenever your cursor is inside the stamp preview that it hides it for you just in case you need to pick or select a particular area uh, within this box. But once you move your cursor out, now you can see the preview. You'll also notice that it's context sensitive. So whatever you enable in your channels 
3D Coat's going to show the preview, but as soon as you disable that channel, it's no longer showing it in the preview. So let's turn off depth and enable color. Turn color off, enable specularity. And if I modify the specularity intensity here, it's not really going to apply anything. It's all based on what I have here if I choose to modulate specularity. Right. We have convex and concave specularity, and this really comes into play whenever you're working in a depth channel like this. You can see it reflected in the preview. Let's modulate color as well. Once again, we can turn that off if we want. And if you enter the value numerically in the box here, you can go above the value of 1. Let's try 2. It's 1.5. The last thing I want to cover is the mapping type. When you select UV mapping now, you have a number of different controls here that gives you a little bit more editing control for rotation, shifting along the U-axis in your UV space, or V. You scale. So let me go back up to the top and turn Fill with Smooth off. And now I can click on the object. All right, before we conclude here, allow me to quickly clean this up just by making some adjustments at the layer level by adjusting the depth. And then the color opacity, as well as changing the specularity type. Adjust the depth one more time. We can test a few different blending modes, just like you have in Photoshop. Okay, so. That is a comprehensive look at using the Fill Tool in 3D Coat. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.